What is going on ladies and gentlemen, it's Real Touch Gmail here back with another Java tutorial and today is going to be our 13th tutorial in the series and this is going to be animations, how to deal with animations, how to create animations, all of that fun stuff. So we're actually going to be going over creating an actual animation class and uh, if we run the game here, we're going to add a cool player walking animation that we had in our player underscore sheet dot png. So we're going to add these frames here and it's going to look like it's walking. Now I went ahead and and uh, actually just loaded all of these images here. So I loaded this entire row right here, not over here, just, just everything on the left, this first row. And that's just again the walking animation. So uh, if you don't know how to actually grab textures, go ahead and take a look at my last tutorial number 12 and that will show you how to you know create your sprite sheet, buffered image loaders and, and load all that fun stuff. So uh, so yeah, so here we have a player uh, buffered image array uh, containing seven images. And of course it goes to six here because zero counts as one. So uh, so yeah, let's get right into it. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to create a new class. And I'm going to call this class animation. All right. So there's going to be a few things that we have in this class. First off, we're going to have speed because you know we want the speed of the animation private in frames and this is going to be how many frames are actually um, uh, like if we have you know say we had that walk cycle which is six or seven images then our frames would be seven because you know it would have to loop through seven frames and then we're gonna have some local stuff which is private in index equals zero and private in count equals zero and this is just going to be what we're currently at and then what we need to be at when we actually update what our images are and stuff like that. A little confusing but it's alright, Well, uh, I'll explain it later. So then we're going to create a buffered image array and I'm going to call this images. And I'm also going to create a private buffered image current IMG and control shift go to import those. And so basically Buffered. In, this is going to be how many images we have, and then this is going to be our current image that we are to display, right? So if we go ahead and create the constructor here, public animation, we're going to have int speed, all right, and we're also going to have buffered image dot 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 args, okay? And now what this basically does is it allows us to have an infinite amount of uh, of parameters containing the buffered image, right? So in our constructor, we say this dot speed equals speed, and we say images equals new buffered image args. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Uh, wait, no, hold on. Args dot length. And then we just need to create a for loop int i equals zero. I is less than args dot length. I plus plus. And here we're gonna say images i equals args i. So args stands for argument, of course. And and basically what we're doing is we're just we're setting so you know our first argument is going to be you know our first image. Well, that's gonna equal that image. So it, it's just directly correlating with what we have in the parameter to what we have in this you know animation class. And then we are also going to set frames to equal args dot length. Alright, so now that we have that, what I am going to create now is a public void run animation. And here we're going to say index plus plus. Let me scroll down here. Let me make a few lines too. It's in the middle. And I'm going to say if index is greater than speed, index equals zero. And we're going to call a method called next frame, which I'm actually going to make right here. So private void next frame. All right. And basically what we're going to do in here is we're going to say we're going to create a for loop first in i equals zero i is less than frames i plus plus and we're going to say if count equals i 
current img equals images i. All right, and then we're gonna say, we're gonna update the count, so count plus plus, and we're gonna say if count is greater than frames, count equals zero. So basically we're saying that this uh, code right here is going to repeat the animation once it's gone all the way through. And then also this right here is just saying, okay, now if we are looking for if count equals zero, so basically look at count as what frame we are currently on. So if count equals zero and I equals zero, then it's automatically going to turn this current image into image zero, which is our first frame. And this current image is what we're going to display. We're just basically the idea is to just change the current image around once we want it to uh, change. And that's going to have the effect of an animation. So here we're going to create another method public void draw animation graphics G. We're going to have in X, in Y, and that should be good actually. Oh, and then you can have uh, no. Well, actually, we'll do, we'll do that in a second here. But then we're gonna say g dot draw image, and here's where we say we're gonna draw a current image at x, y, and null for our image observer. And then, if you'd like, you can copy this and paste it down. And inside here, add some more parameters: scale x and in scale y. And then here you can put it right in here. So you can actually scale the images still if you're animating. Alrighty, and then you can make the getters and setters if you'd like to, you know, kind of reset the count every time it goes into an animation or uh, reset the speed or anything like that. So, so here's your basic class though for animation. So now what we can do is go into our player class here. And in here we can say private animation player walk. Control shift O to import that. And inside our constructor, we're going to say player walk equals new animation. And here we are going to say the speed, so 10. And we want to be able to put now put in all the images that we want to update. So I'm going to say text player 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I'm not actually going to have the Four, five. I'm not gonna have the idle animation in there. So now that we've created that, now in our tick method, all you have to do is say player walk dot run animation, and in our draw here, we're gonna say here's what we're gonna say. We're gonna say if velocity x does not equal zero, player walk dot draw animation g int because we got to cast it because we're using floats. Int x and int y. And then to just say else, we're going to draw our idle animation. So we're going to run the game now. As you can see, we got our player. Oh, right, and we actually do have to scale it. Good thing I made that method. So 48 by 96. Good thing I made that method. All right, so let's go and run it again. And now as you can see, we're standing here, but now when we move, we actually get a walking animation, which is pretty cool. Do, 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 do. And then if you think it's going a little slow, you can actually update the speed by saying, if we put it to one, it's going to cycle through really fast. Yeah, as you can see. So that's how you change the speed there. I'm actually going to, let's try five. Yeah, I, I, I like that. So that's going to be the tutorial for today. Go in the like button, subscribe. I know you can't actually go backwards here. I'm probably going to do that off screen. That's just a matter of then just loading these sprites over here and, uh, you know, saying, okay, if velocity x is greater than zero, which means it's going in the positive direction. That means it's going to the, the players going to the right. Unless it's going to the left, then we're going to run the player walk left animation, and et cetera, et cetera. So leave a like, go subscribe. Let's try for 100 likes this time. And I will see you guys next time. Peace.